I'm a senior and my father told me that I couldn't lock because my hair had changed and if I grew it out it couldn't it couldn't lock. Old contrary. Can't lock average can. Maybe he wanted to keep me in the country. You're right. <laughs> okay, and I'm saying to have one more question. Okay. Die and stress on the hair. Well, see what I'm talking about? Diet and Okay, and we'll get to some other questions. This is not by any means the end of the list. But before we really get into our subject, I wanted to share with you this brother. He's a poet. He's this way from down east. Um, his name is 13, and I'm going to bring him forward with a very unique piece that he has done on hair. Okay, so please welcome Brother 13. And what's your poem? These Locks. These Locks. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. How y'all doing? Fine. That's good. That's good. Um, um, I'm originally from Norfolk, Virginia. I'm actually down here from D.C. now, which is where I currently reside. Uh, I'm going to share this piece with you. Uh, my my perspective on my hair for anybody who's made the decision to uh, lock their hair or whatever style you've chosen to wear or anything that you've chosen to do that the people who love and respect you the most were like dead set against what you knew that you had to do. See? I see it. <laughs> <laughs> that um, you just knew that you had to do for yourself. For me, that thing was, was locking my hair. I had a lot of uh, gripes from my family members saying, you know, I'm going to stop combing my hair, my hair going to stink, um, I'm just going to stop washing it, so forth and so on. So, in, in response to that, I, um, I wrote this piece. So, y'all ready? Yeah. All right. These locks were spun from sunstorms and rain rains. I used to bathe in dirty water doing things the hard way unconsciously. Create an environment so twisted that I became addicted to negativity and lifted on a temporary chemical, artificial spiritual, high called marijuana. I used to honor alcohol like the father honors Christ. The lazy boy was my throne and a 40 out stood to my right, preaching my word, because a drunk man speaks a sober mind. But in time I came to recognize the light. So the twisting of my hair came with the untwisting of my sight in spite of the fact <coughs> that I was born in financial lack, with a high level of tolerance to deal with the flat, from ignorance, liars, thieves, and drug dealers, even ducking the effect caused by finger squeezing triggers. Now was I afraid of being shot, or did I love that brother too much to let him become a killer? Depends on your perception. In the direction of your life right now, you see I'm holding it down with my own force of gravity called spirituality, and that's the reason your ears are attracted to these words that your eyes observe in the form of my flesh. I am a life and death situation. <clears throat> so I studied everything and crea created myself as an imitation. Skin of the African, eyes of the Asian, facial structure of the native. Cherokee maybe. And the intellectual capacity of the Caucasian that ran the plantation and my title was just the same. So from now on call me master of creation ceremonies equals E which stands for everything. So everything equals the master of creation ceremonies or E equals MC squared. These locks form strands to solidify brain waves. So in the same way these words bounce when I talk, these locks bounce when I walk. So jogging would be rhyming and running frantically would be freestyling. Metaphor, simile, adverb, hyperbole, adjacent congruency, bisect the symmetry of kinetic energy, at terminal velocity, inertia, and tension. Nucleus per square inch, I am the sunburster of this dimension. I am linked with height, volume, and area. Walking the circumference of your perimeter is a carrier of divine messages and common prose. Magnificently unobvious like the Bible code. I am James Evans Jr. Dynamite Explode. For my Big Bang Theory started here. 
And these locks of the trails of comics exit in my atmosphere to penetrate the womb of space and impregnate time with a ticking sound. I'm laying down the law, within the law of expression, to learn lessons, answer questions, and still keep the world guessing at my next move. Lost move, your ain't got nothing to prove. Opposition and checkmate and got nowhere to move. See, I lost a few screws and replaced them with black rivets in the midnight hour with Wilson Pickett aggravating you like crickets in the summertime. I stopped talking and telekinetically hum a rhyme like, um, these locks sprout out of my dome. <laughs> the whole universe is my home. And I've flown from the terra astral to the cosmic. I rock in every form from pebbles to comets, utilizing every page from snail to sonic. And I've weathered every storm from tsunamis to cyclones. You see, these thunderous poems would crack the backbone of a jellyfish. Because these locks of my thoughts split into spirals. My skull is the word of God. This is the Quran. This is the Bible. These are holy tablets. And these are God body lessons. And in the back, I got 360 questions you can ask anybody who's stepping to me. Because these locks are free. These locks are hip hop. These locks are rock and roll. These locks are underground. Because these locks got soul. These locks are sunrises. These locks are sunsets. And. This one in the front, it's my first time on stage. Mic check. So as you can see, I got a long way to grow with this poetry. One, two, these locks are for you. These locks are for I. These locks for you and I, T-Y, it's a unity. These locks for revelation and Deuteronomy. These locks for freedom, justice, and equality. These locks are all I am and all I gotta be. Cause these locks are spun from rainstorms and sun rays and now I bathed in holy water, doing things my way, and that's consciously. Creating an environment so uplifted that paralyzed me and feel it in their spines. Cause these locks are divine. Peppermint shampoo and Indian hemp make them shine. These locks took time. It's been four years now. I created myself a king. <coughs> and these locks are my crown. <laughs> CD, but like I have to get back on the road. So anybody that wants it, I don't want to interrupt your lecture. I have a CD. Anybody that would like a copy of the CD, I have some right by the back door. Um, and I have to get ready to get on the road because my like the family so that you I'm really with. are interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm coming along, but, okay. but you know, the, it's not necessary for y'all for y'all to move. I just wanted to make y'all aware. I'm sure I'll be in the Richmond area again sometime soon. All right. God yeah, bless y'all. Thank you for the help you have to get us in the gold. Thank you for letting me be All right. God All bless y'all. can be considered virgin hair. And virgin hair is hair that has had no chemical treatment whatsoever. But um, 
we know that uh, for the sake of this conversation, I won't necessarily talk about virgin hair as being natural hair, but hair that has texture, because many of us texturize our hair, many of us color our hair, or many of us will even press our hair. So we'll talk about natural hair from the perspective of hair that has texture. And um, what I also want to make sure that I, I let you know is that I'm not going to stand here and just, you know, we're going to interact. I'm not going to just talk at you the whole time. So if there's a, an op, uh, a need for you to um, step in and ask a question at the moment, that'll be fine. But we will have an opportunity at the end to address specific questions like the ones that we talked about earlier. But like I was saying, one of the main features of natural hair is the presence of texture. And at some point, we began to reject our texture. Now, we might say, you know, it's not our fault. It has far-reaching ramifications of why we reject the having texture. But um, at some point, it was more than likely a parent or someone who just couldn't manage it. It was just too much hair on that child's head, you know? Boy child, girl child. They cut the boy child's head, you know, too much hair to comb through for him, and he was frustrated, and you were frustrated, and everybody was crying, trying to comb the baby's hair. <laughs> and then, um, you know, with the, with the little girl, we got to the point where it was just too hard. So we said we're going to send her somewhere to get it done, or we are going to press this hair out. And when she gets old enough, we're going to put a relaxer in. We're going to work with this hair. You know, the, the, um, the patient wasn't there. So one of the most important ingredients in working with your natural hair is having patience with yourself, um, first of all, and um, <coughs> patience with the process. Because no matter how we're wearing our hair, it requires some, some a attention. And uh, we've just been taught to do things almost in a microwave type of, um, with the microwave attitude, you know, we kind of want it quick and we want it now. So, um, my next question to you all were, what were some of the reasons that we decided we wanted to straighten our hair? So this is, this is the real, this is the real stuff right here. Why did we decide we wanted to straighten our hair? Why your European straight look? Mm. say she thought that was what black men want. Mm. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna touch on all of that. Okay. A lot of us was made to feel ashamed of our natural natty hair. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. They likened it to the, the cinders behind the coals when you burn the coals and what they call that stuff. It was a name for it, crinkle top or something. I heard an elder lady make mention of Crinkle top. Don't bring no crinkle top boys around here. She said, told her that. But, um, but that's true. And in addition to all of that trend, you know, because we all kind of like victims of trends all the time. We seeing uh, all the brothers Snoop, he got straight. You know, you want his hair straight. And that's a big thing. And it always has been in like the Midwest. You know, um, we have seen like, um, all the sisters in the video, they got the little ad covered up. <laughs> um, um, Halle Berry. How many people used to come to the salon and say, bring me that little picture of Halle? I want Halle's cut. And now they want Oprah's cut. And it was one more sister. Um, oh, 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 back in the day it was um, Anita Baker. So see, the trends, you know, what we see, we're always being influenced by the things that are being shown to us in the media and what have you, and celebrities and other people that we identify with. But um, that's true. Trends play an important role. Um, ease of, of styling plays an important role. You know, that comability factor plays an important role. Mama got both five, ten children. You know, how could she ever possibly <coughs> do it on her own? <coughs> now, what are some of the reasons that we now want texture in our hair. Why do we want texture? What's the deal now? I 
I did it because I had, when I had perms in my hair, at one point I had really bad experience and all my hair fell out. And I just said I was tired of it. And I wanted it to be like it was when I was a little girl. So I just, I decided to just let it be natural. And, I let it and that's not uncommon. So many people come to me because relaxers have um, caused them irreparable damage to their um, hair or scalp. Um, they've had reactions, allergic reactions, up types of things have gone on because of chemical treatments to the hair. And what are some of the other reasons that we want to? Well, I would hope that um, people now are becoming more um, educated about their self-awareness and their self-esteem, <coughs> feeling better about who they are. Mm -hmm. They're more educated, more informed. True. Knowledge of self, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a certain connectedness that you have when you begin to learn your history. So that is true as well. Did anybody else have any comment about why we want to wear a texture? Well, I think it's a like back on a young lady that works with me said that nowadays it's no set style. Mm -hmm. You know, before everybody had like the flip or the bob. Right. You know, right. Now you can look around and you'll see people with locks, you'll see people who have straight hair. So there's no set standard as what your hair should look like. Exactly. So it's whatever makes you happy, whatever you feel looks nice on you or so I, and, I, and I like that because mm -hmm. you can look around and you can see people with a little natural pros and you can see the locks and you can see the braids and you can see the straight. You know, there's no one setting the thing that says this is what beauty looks like. <coughs> okay, and it tends to be more acceptable now, mm -hmm. too, because at one point, at one time, you couldn't go on the U crops with braids in your hair, mm -hmm. and you still can't go in there with locks and think you're going to fill out an application, mm -hmm. you know. But um, far more people are finding less. Um, friction when it comes to, you know, what they're doing with their hair when it comes to employment and what have you. Um, and I guess society overall has begun to digest it a little bit better. But there again, trend. You know, look at Angie Stone. She came out with the super fro. And sisters was digging Angie Stone. Look at Erica Badu. She had the head wrap and the braids. And you saw sisters wearing head wraps. I mean, her locks. Um, uh, India Ari, um, um, what's the sister um, with the guitar? India and uh, who's Lauren Hill, Lauren Hill. So again, you know, people standing in front of us, people whom we see, you know, who have a certain lifestyle that we can identify with, they tend to reflect <coughs> something to us that allows us to open our minds. You know, people talk about role modeling, not wanting to be a role model and stuff, but that's what happens. Now, this leads right into my next piece about how hairstyles have always expressed the mindset of a people or a time. Because we were talking, we're talking about texture now, but texture is not new. First of all, we were born with it. It's ancient. But then there came a time where we rejected it, and then we came back to it, then we rejected it, and now we're back to it again. When you look at um, those brothers the, um, back in the um, Black Panther movement, you know, they might have put that beret down on it, but it was all out in the side, you know? Um, the Pan-Africanists um, always chose to do something unique with their hair because they were expressing um, opposition to the status quo. Um, the, uh, the, the, he the shaving heads of the prison inmate even, that kind of showed that where that person's place was, um, that they were different from the rest of society. The um, covered heads of the enslaved, because the combs were taken from you. When we were brought across the water, when, when Africans were um, enslaved here, um, they weren't allowed to maintain many of their customs that attached them to the land. You know, their drums were taken away. Their languages were taken away, and um, that also included a comb here, you know, because hairstyles meant something. And uh, in, in uh, many cultures, the attendants of the queens or of the kings will have certain hairstyles that will identify who they were or what their status was. The, the um, locks became introduced to us First of all, most of us through the Rasta, through the Rasta Firing Brothers. And 
the Rastafarian uh, brethren and sisters, they look back on scripture, and they also look back on the rebel rebel warriors um, and indigenous, um, I mean, um, indigenous people of Africa who were also warriors and fighters like in the Abyssinian Wars. And they wore that as a sign of, um, like, well, they call them dreadlocks. I mean, like, stay back. <laughs> I don't identify with the oppressor's ways and values. So they had an outward view, an outward way of reflecting that by wearing their hair locked. Um, and then the, 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 the initiates, initiates into any um, esoteric teachings, they at some point had their hair cut, and then as an elder or wise person, the hair was allowed to grow out, and you can tell who the elders were in the community or who the wise people were in the community a lot of the times by the way they wore their hair, hair and maybe even a hair wrap. But those are the very reasons that hair is also political. Because what we wear and how we wear it, you know, it, it expressed something about um, it expressed something about our personal, our personal standards or the things that we fear. Because again, I don't know how many times a sister has come through the salon because her husband wants her hair down her. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and even now, I was looking at a commercial, and the sister was like. We just, um, I don't know what the product was, but she was just happy because it moved. It didn't wear yeah. hair down. This conditioner doesn't wear my hair down. It lives. And so, and the brothers too, you know, they like it when the sister, like now, you know, you want to think that the conscious people are wearing the locks. The brothers just liking that style because sisters have a little thing about it. It's that little Lenny Kravitz thing. They, you know, it's like run your fingers through my head and reverse. Run your fingers okay. through my dreadlocks. <laughs> through my dreadlocks. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so, again, we're talking about the career and the work thing. Um, I had a sister come through the salon. She was back and forth. She's back and forth. She had natural hair when she came. So we got her hair natural, and she wants to lock it. So she was saying, okay, we're going to lock it. But hold on. I'm going on the interview. We're not going to like it yet. And I was like, okay, well, let me line it up. Let me do something with it, you know. And so she let me line it up. And then, you know, we've been through this a couple of times. She's been on the interview. She called back two and three interviews. Then she gets to the point where um, she she feels pretty secure in this new job. And she's going for it. And she, um, she has a position, rather. So now she's going to start the process. So we're going to start, you know, twisting the hair and everything. But then she came back and she was like, sis, you know, if you start to look like you're getting too free, they're going to start to put the shackles back on you. And I don't want Massa to think I'm a runaway slave right now. <laughs> Let me go ahead. I ain't going to do a lot right now. And, you know, I'm like, okay. And I already understand it's a process, and I'm there to support, you know. So the sister was like, you know, she... She abandoned in the locks now, so we cut the hair back down after all this time it took to grow and everything. So um, since then, we've cut the hair down, and she called me back, and she's tired of that place. She on another interview, so we're right back where we started. But career and work, the hair, like I said, the U-Crops thing, they don't even want you to come up in there with locks. Now you can have braids, but better not put no color in the braids. So, you know... Career and, and our goals to work have a, a big influence on how we choose to present ourselves. And hair is so significant. Whether we choose for it to be or not to be, a lot of times people look at you and they tend to make an assessment of you from the outside. And that's why I was saying, you know, if you're right on the inside, and I don't mean just, I mean spiritually and literally. You know, you have to take care of your body. But if you're right on the inside, it manifests itself on the outside effortlessly. Mm -hmm. And how many of you, I see some people in here who have locks and have braids and wearing their hair natural. But how many of you were starting your locks or you just started letting that relaxer grow out, went to the cookout, or went to your mama house 
And she was wondering, what did you do to your hair? Where is your good hair? The straight hair? <laughs> Y'all know? You got a story? Everybody has a story. Well, I just started my life. I had lots of 20, I've had lots of 20, 21 years. And I had cut them due to the changes that I had gone through in my life. So I wanted to start them over Okay. But um, I remember when I did get some length to it. And when I started my life, by the way, it was for spiritual reasons. I wanted to be identified at that time. It wasn't trendy. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be recognized and recognize um, my spirituality to be recognized for my years of starvation and starting. And um, I, um, I w when I had got to my dumb ball with my mom, I was just like, she was looking at my hair, she had a couple of drinks. She said, you know, if we spend some time, we can take this stuff. <laughs> when you do something different. When you change your hair, don't change your name, and don't change your eating habits. Don't you become a vegetarian when you've been eating chitlins. <laughs> but, um, but that goes to show you that people become uncomfortable, and a lot of times that's the only way that they can handle changes that you make. When you're doing something good for yourself, when you're changing something about yourself, for you, finally, for yourself, then people can't handle it. And a lot of times, family are the main people who feel comfortable enough to express it to you. Because my mom told me, my mama told me, you won't go on with that hair. I'm like, Mom, this is the hair I want. You know, what was that about? And she is a smart woman. Uh, I don't want to make you think my mom, you know, she's not thinking. But I mean, you know, she lost her mind. She told me I wasn't born with this hair. But I have heard story after story after story of how, um, you know, something went on in the family. People get mad. They don't even want you to come around the house. Don't come to the cookout because you're going to embarrass us or something. Uh, well, you know, you know, I had lost a few uh -huh. years. <laughs> Beautiful and, um, lives. You know, recently, um, you know, took them off. But when I started the lock, you know, my hair was already long. My mom was like, oh, why are you doing that to your hair, your beautiful hair? But the thing, once they start growing, we are so conditioned by that length. Yes. I don't know why. Once they start growing, oh, your hair is so beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, yes. yes. You know, it's that yes. growth thing. And it's like they look up one day, and all of a sudden you have hair. You know, they didn't pay attention to the transition, yeah. the transformation, and you or the hair. But all of a sudden, one day it was something else. Mm -hmm. Because I'll never forget um, how in, you know, the family, you know, their lifestyle is the same. So I remember going over there one Christmas, and the whole euphoria of Christmas combined with um, <laughs> me and my new long locks near the Christmas tree caused my daddy to have, like, an enlightened moment. <laughs> he said, eat faith. Is that all that you have? <laughs> But you know what? He said, is that all of your hair? And I said, yeah. You know, like, what? I couldn't even believe he was asking me. He said, sure is beautiful. Yeah. And I was like, okay. You know, I accepted that after all of the traumatization that <laughs> was up to that point. And even my mother, as, as hardcore as she is, because she is hardcore, <laughs> one day she, um, kind of eased up on me and looked at my hair and she said, mm, you think my hair do that? <laughs> That's as close as she's gotten to it. She never really gets too deep in the question about the locks, but she asked me if I thought her hair would do this. And I was like, yeah. It's going to do it. I want to say too, for, um, in, in a lot of instances, um, it was a uh, thing of self-loathing that um, when people saw your locks, um, us as the people saw you
you love and respect yourself enough to be that whom you are, others will love and respect you as well. Mm -hmm. Got to remember that. See how this is just flowing? And y'all wondering, when we going to get to the hell? <laughs> 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 when we going to get to the question about president? Okay. Um, here's another one of my shameless plugs about the Indigo <laughs> So, um, first you have to have love by yourself. Then you have some patience with yourself and know that the beauty is coming from within. And like I said, it's a spiritual thing or a psychological thing even, but it's also a physical thing. And that's what I want to talk about um, now because what goes into your blood goes right into your hair. If you smoking, your hair smoking. If you drinking, your hair is drinking. Whatever it is that you're doing, if you're feeding yourself um, denatured, processed, partial foods, then that's the kind of hair that you have on your head. And you can ask, um, I guess you can ask a biologist or somebody like that, but they, they can tell you about hair analysis and how you can extract a piece of hair from the head and analyze it and see how that person has lived. And that remains intact. You know, they, they have um, uh, um, pulled up um, bones and tissue from antiquity and can tell where that person um, was from, what kind of climate they lived in, what kind of lifestyle they had, what kind of diet they had. It all plays a role in um, what comes out. You know, and the hair is just another appendage of, of your skin, but your skin is... is and your hair and your nails, all of those things are connected. Well, we are whole, so it's all really connected. But um, we're moving on into actually looking at taking care of ourselves. <laughs> Which way are you supposed to look? He don't try to look. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she don't hear being. <laughs> okay. So healthy hair comes from within. Now this is just a small, 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 small list of things that you can do to incorporate into your, your lifestyle um, to ensure that you remain healthy on the outside as well as on the inside. This is a small teeny weeny list. Um, it, it, it by no means reflects the, the limits of what you can do, but a multivitamin. A full spectrum mineral and just herbs in the diet on a daily basis. I mean, they got all kinds of teas out now, you know, and put a little honey in that. That's an easy way to get some herbs in, in your diet. But um, minerals and vitamins, of course, are available in supplemental form. But the best way to get it is from the source, you know. So I put the sources here, but sometimes, you know, it might not be easy or convenient or, you know, whatever. So it's important to get your. Um, your minerals and your vitamins in the body, either from a supplement or from the source themselves. Get it from where, get it from where the vitamin E tablets get it or the vitamin C tablets get it. But um, by all means, please incorporate these things into your diet. And you can do that simply by, you know, like as far as fruits and vegetables go, just include all the colors of the fruits and vegetables in, in what you eat. Eat your red, your red um, fruits and vegetables, your green, your yellow, um, the eggplants, that's a whole nother color, but um, uh, um, oranges and, and yellows. When you begin to incorporate at least the different colors of the fruits and vegetables, you kind of know you're touching on a lot of different elements. And your food is your medicine. And when Dr. Layla Africa comes out, you know, you can go into even more detail with him specifically about these things because he, he is well versed in um, taking care of yourself um, from within internally. So remember that um, and do further research. And I have, I have several books over here, but his book is a good resource, which is African Holistic Health. And then I have another book that I'm using to jack up my projector here that I can't show you. But um, okay, and let's, let's just move along so that we can get to the questions that we want to ask. But I want to talk practical <coughs> things with you because that is why we're here. But I, I could not go into the practical aspect of taking care of your hair without talking about 
the other aspects, the foundation, um, the foundation aspects of caring for yourself. You have to start from the inside. And um, when you start from the inside, then at least you have a good foundation. And then when you come to me, I have a good foundation to begin with. But a lot of times it's a lot of repair work, a lot of fixing some damage. But um, I was saying um, here, any avoidance of anything excessive is very important because no matter what you do, if you do it in excess, it can become damaging. You want, you don't want to, um, uh, like, uh, even with na caring for your natural hair, excessive combing and excessive pulling on the hair or pulling the hair too tight and doing things um, detrimental to the hair, um, shampooing it all the time, um, um, putting too much products on the hair and putting too many things on the scalp is damaging to the hair. The most important aspect of, of good hair care is keeping it simple. Um, quality shampoos and conditioners, you can purchase these things because they have lots of natural um, shampoos and conditioners on the market and basically, sorry to tell you, most of them do the same thing. You know, they all say this is, you know, the super supreme. And it is true that you can buy better quality hair products than others and that's why I emphasize quality. But for the most part, shampoos are made to attach themselves to the debris on the hair and scalp and to allow it to be rinsed away. It is not as simple as just running water through your hair. Shampoos do have a role, and they and they have an important role. So it's good to get a good quality shampoo. And um, if you don't want to purchase one, if you want to um, be a little bit more holistic, even if you have the time, you can always make your own. And there are books now on making your own hair care products, um, um, and shampoos and what have you. And a lot more people now are developing products. Um, that allow you to care for your hair and they use all natural ingredients. So when you go outside, talk to Teresa and Joel about um, their natural products that they have because they have lots of nice body care products. But um, shampoos and conditioners that are biodegradable are very important when you're doing your hair at home because biodegradable products, and it usually says so on the labeling, biodegradable products tend to um, um, find, them, find their way back into the, the environment. You know, like they won't cause your hair to break down. They naturally assimilate right back into um, the, the, um, yeah, the earth and the organic nature of your hair. So you go and put a strand of hair in some um, swab or prell or something like that and go back in a couple of days. If you see it, <laughs> try to touch it and see if it's still intact because nine times out of ten it's going to break up into a million pieces. Like, you, you know, you chop the head of a snake and the rest of it, you know. No. In a bunch of pieces, it is no longer cold. And so that's what happens when you don't use good quality products on your hair and you don't rinse it away properly. Um, that, that product can remain on the hair and actually begin to damage it from within. That's whether you have natural hair or chemically treated hair. You must use quality products. Now, um, good styling aids. Good styling aids are, of course, um, things we put on the hair to help it to detangle, to help, to help make it a little bit easier. Good setting lotions. Um, there are lots of, there are lots of um, natural products like rinses that you can use on the hair that will allow you, that will um, cause a smooth texture on the cuticle of the hair. The cuticle is the outermost layer of the hair. And a lot of these products simply allow their cuticle to lay down in such a way that it does not um, create an environment where um, friction is present and you can comb through the hair a lot um, easier than if you didn't have it present. So that's why an important styling aid is necessary um, when combing. And that leads me into um, the combing because there are, good, there are techniques that you have to have for combing the hair. But with, um, with a head of a full head of hair and you're trying to work with it, you have to have a, a pattern almost. And I wish I had something here to demonstrate with you, but, it, but it's pretty simple. When you have a full head of hair and you have to work your way through it and it's natural, 
you know, to look at it, it could be, you know, a traumatic experience. You know, you might not think you want to tackle it, but if you take it step by step, it becomes very simple, especially when you um, part the hair from front to back, from, from the um, forehead all the way to the nape, and from ear to ear, so you have quadrants, you have two sections in the front and two in the back. You just simply take the hair and clip it away. And you always use a nice large tooth comb even with even with softer, less kinky hair textures, you always want to use a large tooth comb. And then you start in the back. And if it's too much hair there, then you section that hair off into a half or a third even. And you simply start at the bottom, um, the, the end strands of the hair, comb it through, and work your way up. Because as you comb it through, it's detangling at the bottom. So you're working your way through any tangles by the time you get up to the scalp. You start at the scalp and comb through the hair, you're going to have some problems. In fact, you're going to do some more damage. And um, you might end up with some locks that <laughs> 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 you didn't really intend to start off with. Because I remember my mama <laughs> combing my hair. And then, you know, she started to pull it and can't get it. She'd go get them scissors. Oh. <laughs> she cut it out. Y'all know y'all did. Oh. Somebody <laughs> cut some hair messing around with a knack they couldn't get out. Um, so, so, so it's important to know how to comb that hair, um, cause you gotta keep it in your head, alright, um, and creativity and style, that's the main thing that people are seeking, I find, um, in addition to good healthy hair, you know, I, I must say that my clients are very intelligent and they understand the importance of first having um, healthy hair. And if they didn't understand it when they came in, they certainly knew when they left out of the door that you can't come in and hand me the relaxer. You can't come in and hand me the, the thing that you want me to use. I'm basically going to give you information on what it is that you need to move forward with whatever your goals are. So um, that's the most important thing that I find that people are concerned with because um, I know I used to work with the lady, and she had in one of her ads um, specializing in damaged hair. And her phone used to ring off the hook. Not that she was an extraordinary hairstylist, but she said she specialized in damaged hair, and people sought her out constantly. And that is because people are very concerned with their hair, making, you know, making sure it's healthy or getting it back on track after they've done harm to it. So that's number one. But number two, that creativity and styling, everybody wants their own unique look. And today, um, like the sister was saying about um, people going for the natural hairstyles because they can be their unique self, they can express themselves uniquely, that's what's so attractive and appealing now about people who are wearing their natural hair that hadn't even considered it before because um, twisting the hair, um, braiding the hair, Flatting the hand, individual flats, twisting it, taking it out, um, twirling it up, putting nice little accessories in it, such as my beloved crown jewels that you might see that in my hand, available at and go so long. <laughs> and so, um, so, you know, all of these things, you just have to open your mind. You don't have to be limited to what you've seen in the magazines. You don't have to be limited to some of the, the things that, um, you know, maybe you just grew up knowing about, you know, you just know how to part it down the middle and do that core roll both sides. You know, um, there are so many different things that you can do. And just open your mind by looking into um, different publications, checking out those things, and also, um, you know, talking with the professional. <laughs> you pay Robinson. Okay. And so, um, good maintenance products are very, very important. In, um, Keeping that hairstyle in, in, um, in, its, in its healthiest state visually, you know, so you don't want to go out and get professional work um, done to your hair and you come home and you can't maintain it. So it's important to talk to your educated and professional knowledgeable hairstylist to find out what products work best for uh, maintaining the health of your hair once you leave the salon. But not only that, you need to know that it's important to do things that are, to not do things that are detrimental to your hair. Because um, many of us go home and we 
take our hairstyle and put it on um, a cotton pillowcase. And that cotton is, is naturally absorbing the moisture out of your hair. And um, it, it changes what it looked like yesterday. And so that next day look that you have, um, as far as, as, you know, a whole new hairstyle, then you got a whole new look going on because you laid on that pillowcase or you didn't wrap it up or it didn't, the wrap didn't stay on or something happened. So a, a smooth textured pillowcase is good because before you laid your head on that pillowcase, I know that I would have recommended you tie your hair up with a smooth, satiny scarf. And it doesn't have to be satin per se, but it has to be smooth so that as that hair moves around underneath it, the friction is not created, which will cause the hair to break. Because um, you notice, sisters who may wear their hair wrapped all the time um, um, will have a lot of breakage here. A lot of breakage around the hairline or over the ear. Even when you wear your glasses, a lot of times, you know, we got breakage here. But um, I'm back to the um, hair wraps. A lot of times, we're wearing fabrics that are not necessarily um, supportive of healthy hair. So when we wrap our hair with hair wraps, um, it's important to put something smooth underneath it. And the same goes for wearing hats and crowns. Um, for those of us who cover our heads for any reason whatsoever, um, it's important to put something under there that creates a foundation um, for their hair not to be damaged. Because um, any friction, like cotton, is, is, is like the hair wrap of choice for me. Because it stays right where I put it, you know, as tall as I want, to the side, whatever, it stays right where you put it. And so therefore, if anything happens, when your head is shifting, bump up against a wall or something. <laughs> 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 hair ripped out and you can take the hair wrap off and hair coming out with it. And so you have to do something underneath there that allows the hair to kind of have a, a smooth place to move against. It's just kind of common sense and it really becomes common sense when you hear somebody talk about it. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? That you don't want to do something that would allow the hair to come out the head. So if um, you wrap your hair at night with something smooth and sadly, and if that comes off, you got your back up satin pillowcase on the bed to back that up. Now, I had a few, but these were some, um, I had a few um, ideas to share with you about some things you can make at home. Since I mentioned, if you wanted to create some products, you can. It's very simply done. And here are some recipes. And I also have a copy of this that I can give to you. Um, because this is a little bit more detail, but, you know, fresh herbs like rosemary, um, supplements, like this is biotin, this is especially good, this is one of the B vitamins, this is especially good for um, preventing hair loss in men and that baldness that can take place. But, um, you know, things, things, from, things from the trees and things from the earth. Um, um, lemon, they're good astringents for the hair. Um, garlic is good for the internal body, cleansing in the blood. And I have some olive oil. Y'all all probably have olive oil right in, in your, um, in your uh, cupboards. And olive oil is a good scalp oil, and it's good to work those things into the scalp and stimulate it with a nice massage, not rubbing the hair, but massaging the scalp massaging the scalp in circular motion, and that's a nice way to connect with your significant other, too. <laughs> <laughs> you can have them come and rub some oil in your scalp since they want your hair to grow so long. <laughs> and um, avocados, nice fatty content in avocados. It's good for moisturizing the hair. So get you a good overripe avocado. Um, sage oil is, is a good hair rinse, because, especially for dark hair because it creates a nice natural sheen and it has astringent properties as well. But that, again, is not the limit. There's so much more, um, so many more things that has been created um, by the all to bring, um, bring you everything you need for your physical self and well-being. And so these are just a few samples. I also have some great seed oil. These are just a few ideas of things that you can that you can do, um, that you don't have to go out and spend a whole lot of money on because, you know, I'm in the beauty, um, the hair care industry, and I know that 
It's like a multi-million, billion dollar industry, and that's because we buy everything. We buy all the super grow hemp hair care, <laughs> miracle oil, you know, thinking we're going to go and get a quick solution. You know, but nothing that you put on the outside of your hair is going to make it grow. Sorry. See, you get rid of all your stuff, you know, all your cholesterol, you know, stuff that, you know, promises. <laughs> because what's going to do it is a healthy body and taking care of yourself from the inside. That's what ensures it, you know. So um, don't get caught up and going in the do the supply and buying up everything because it say African pride, you know, or because it say hair mayonnaise and carrot oil and all that stuff, you know. Somebody got some carrot oil in that carrot. I can, I can feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. But see, go ahead on and get your Duke's mayonnaise with his eggs in it and the oil in it and the vinegar in it. And apply it. You know, it's okay. Or you just get you some eggs and some oil and some vinegar and mix it up yourself. And it protein, moisturization, and an astringent. That's what egg oil and vinegar is. You don't have to go and spend the money on on the the, the, the thing that they have marketed to you to tell you this is what you need. Now I'm not saying don't come to the salon, you know. <laughs> That's the point. But what I am saying is we don't have to be sold all the time on all of these, you know, things that are put on us. That we don't feel like we, we should not feel like we have to go out and get something specific to get the results we want. But I also understand that a lot of us just didn't even know. You know, we didn't know. I mean, I didn't know either because I was that sister that, you know, I had my mother out buying all kinds of things, you know, trying to, you know, get it to grow. You know, I mean, it was growing fine. I was doing fine, but there again, I've been sold. You know, yeah. Barbie dolls and all that stuff. And got the head, and I want, you know, I want that, I want that look. So I need, I need the Miracle Grow. I need the hemp oil. I need the, um, all the stuff that's going to make me wake up tomorrow and have the long, luxurious hair. <laughs> so I'm saying you can have long, luxurious hair if you go back to what I was saying about the minerals, the vitamins, and the herbs. But not only that, having a healthy attitude and perspective um, about who you are, who you are, where you came from, and... Um, all of those things will fall into place. <laughs> Let me get real quick. I'm gonna answer some of your questions before I um, before I leave the scene. And I had them written down because we were. I asked you earlier about some of the things that um, that you may have needed answers to when you were aware of the fact that there was a, a, a class here or a seminar on caring for your natural hair. And I remember the sister was saying something about pressing curl. Now, what is it that you wanted to ask about pressing and curling the hair? Um, basically, you're surrounded in the area that I'm from. Which I am? Area, mm -hmm.
um, made especially, and that's, you know, um, for instance, one is by Dudley, it's called Cream Press. And I like that product because it's a lightweight product. You use it um, after you've shampooed the hair and um, after you've shampooed and conditioned the hair, as you're moving into the, if you're pressing your hair yourself, because you, you asked me about, you asked me about something you could do? Yeah. Okay. Like if you were pressing it yourself, this, this product is applied while the hair is damp. And this is good not just for pressed hair, it's good for, um, you know, just the foundation of any of your hairstyles, whether it's natural, um, well really if it is natural, I don't, I don't use this so much on relaxed hair. But it's a good, it's a good product to use when blowing out the hair because number one, it has a layer of protection on the hair, which is good, you know, when he is concerned. But also, it allows you to have a nice lightweight layer of oil on the hair that's not greasy and that still protects from the heat when you, when the hair is then pressed out or curled or what have you, then um, you have a good solid, um, you have a good solid foundation because you know these products have dual purposes. So you have a good solid foundation and it's not something that you use as you're doing each strand, you know, slick down that hair strand and, and grease it down and press it out, and slick down the next piece and pass it out and all that stuff and you got your nice little shiny, you know, tack down to your scalp hair, you know, that's eliminated because you started off with a good foundation and the good shampoo and conditioning and then using the product before you blow dry it. And that's what the difference is a lot of times between a natural press and then like a, a that hard press as as the elders used to call it, a good hard press. So um, that's that's one of the <laughs> things. And you press at your salon. Sorry? Do you press at your salon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't do a lot of hair pressing, but yeah. And so someone wanted to ask me a question about taking care of the locks. Who asked that question? Okay, sis. Your son. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just thought, well, um, when you, he first got done last year, mm -hmm. he, he made the decision that he wanted a lot. Okay, so congratulations. That was first and yeah. um, it's not because um, it was easier for me, which it is. Okay. Because I don't have to braid it. But um, I want to know the proper way to maintain them, take care of make sure that they are healthy. Mm -hmm. And um, he hasn't had any like, to prevent, like, breakage mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, does, does your son still go to have his locks maintained? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to know what to do in between. Right. Okay. Well, it's very simple, believe it or not, because taking care of lock hair is just like taking care of any other hair, but just consider it as the strands being much thicker. You know, so you shampoo in the hair as you ordinarily would. The important thing about caring for lock hair at home is making sure that you rinse the hair very, very well. And when, um, I don't know what they use on his hair at the salon, and um, I do want to emphasize the fact that um, less is better when it comes to um, locked hair. Like, you don't want to go and get your lock butters. You don't need all of that stuff. I know it's appealing and I know it's inviting, you know, to think I need lock butter to make my locks locked. But that's not true because the hair has locked. The hair is, is has, the locks have been formed and created, you know. Um, but anyway, back to the answering of your question. When you shampoo in the hair, you shampoo your hair just um, like you would any other kind of hairstyle. Um, you rinse in the hair extremely well. You want to follow it with a good um, sh um, conditioning product. And if you are using, if you're doing things at home for your son, the best thing to do is to go to like the, the natural food store and to get uh, a natural shampoo and a natural conditioner because they are all biodegradable. They're made with botanicals. So they're not going to do any harm to his hair. So if by chance you didn't get every trace of the things that you shampooed and conditioned him with, and just by chance if you didn't rinse it out, then he still doesn't have to deal with the possibility of hair becoming damaged because of products being left behind. As far as, um, and that's the foundation, the good um, 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 cleansing of the hair and scalp. And Cleansing of the scalp is very important. Um, it's good to go in to the scalp with a natural astringent like um, uh, witch hazel because you want to maintain the health of the scalp. 
a lot of hair on his head, you know, and he may perspire more. He may produce more oil, having, um, you know, more hair on his head. So it's important at that point to use a good astringent. Even you can do that in between visits or in between shampooing and taking care of it. But as far as, um, you know, what to do is um, when twisting the hair and that kind of thing, a nice lightweight oil also available at the, um, like the natural food stores would be like a jojoba oil, which you always see as an ingredient in all the hair products. Natural moisturizers, jojoba oil, grapeseed oil, um, um, a lightweight almond oil. You can use an oil like that. Or I prefer, what I use a lot in the salon is, is plain aloe vera. So an aloe vera plant, I mean, you can go to Uncle Jim's, that's you crops, and, and get you like an aloe vera plant for like $3, something like this would be about $3. And this will last you a long time because you're going to take maybe a piece like that, you know, cut it off with some scissors or break it off, and then just kind of split it down the middle, and you will expose the pulp of the plant. And there's a slimy texture to aloe vera. Is, it resembles gel, you know, and instead of going to get that brown pro style stuff, <laughs> you know, I don't even know what's in that. Instead of going to get that, you go and get you an aloe vera plant. Start paying attention because, see, everybody is telling you what's working, but they're selling it to you different. Like, for instance, we're seeing shea butter all over the place now, right? Yeah. Everybody's product is advertising has shea butter. Hair shea butter, hair shea butter. Everybody's product is advertising vitamin E oil. Contains vitamin E. Contains aloe. Go get it yourself. You know, it, um, it's not going to hurt you. And if it doesn't work, you know, no loss. You know, but but look look at what they're using and consider, you know, going and, and doing it on your own and trying something new. But um, aloe vera. To twist, to twist his hair. If, you, if you're also going to do that, if you don't feel comfortable twisting, it, just separate it. You know, until he can get back to the salon, which is what you know they'll probably just retwist the bush to keep it separated. Um, someone wanted to know about braiding chemically treated hair. Was that you? Okay. What was your question? Um, usually, I wait six weeks after I've got my hair cut up to mm -hmm. braid it. Okay. And. Uh, after I get, I keep my braids in, depending on how long it gets, either mm -hmm. it gets rebraided throughout the winter, but I don't know how to, uh, how to take care of it, how to keep it from breaking off while you have your hair and the braid, as far as your relaxed hair versus the new stuff. Okay. The foundation first would be a very good conditioning treatment, mm -hmm. and um, I would recommend doing that in a salon because a, a stylist, um, a, a salon professional, may have a product that has more, well, that has a, a more quality ingredients than what you can buy over the counter. And then they may be a little bit more concentrated and they know how to use it. See, so you, you know, you kind of think that, okay, it's a conditioner. I can put it on the longer I leave it on, the better. But a lot of times that's not the case and it can even be damaging. So to go and get a, a good quality conditioning treatment, which will probably include um, what is called a protein treatment. It's very important because even though nothing really um, can transform your hair, so to speak, from the outside, it can impart a certain um, layer of, of protection on the hair that will uh, also help increase the, the tensile strength of the hair, which is like the ability of the hair to stretch and return without breaking off, you know, that wasn't there prior to the treatment. So, you know, there are some, you know, there is certainly validity to conditioners, um, um, quality conditioners versus not quality conditioners, though. And um, they do serve a purpose, but let's just know that the foundation still is coming from the inside. But anyway, um, to have a good treatment is important. And then to wait that period of time, you said you've been waiting about six weeks before you get the braids after you've been relaxing the hair. That's a good time period because the hair has grown out quite a bit because most relaxers touch-ups are done between six and eight weeks with the new growth. And so you have um, new growth at your scalp. And to have a knowledgeable braider, I'm not a braider, 
but um, to, to have someone who braids hair and has integrity about their work is, is of the utmost importance because they're not going to do anything detrimental to the hair, at least no one. Like braid it tight to the scalp. Braid it tight to the scalp, um, use the inferior um, hair products, you know, in the hair that they will sometimes put in your hair. You know, it's a lot of controversy about some of these um, hair additions and what the chemical compositions of those are and what they've been treated with that can also cause allergic reactions, just like if you were to put a chemical on your skin. You know, so the hair is important. So if someone needs who you go to, the, you know, these people need to know what they're using. Hopefully they've had purchased the quality products to use on you, which may mean that you may have to pay a little bit more, but if you're getting the quality and you're protected, then it's, you know, it balances the value is there. Okay, so um, someone wanted to know how long they had to wait before they, after they took the braids off to get a relaxer. Okay, my recommendation is no less than a week. No less than a week. And that's because you're taking braids out of your hair and that's putting tension on the um, scalp. And though you don't see it, there are small abrasions on your scalp. Um, and then, when you take the braids out, don't you just get up in there and just scratch it, you know? That's not good, but that's what we do. And so you take the braids out, and the whole time you had the braids, you're going into, you're doing all this. <laughs> Y'all see? <laughs> so all of that is creating an irritation on the scalp, whether you see it or not. The thing is, people don't see it or they don't feel it and they didn't have any soreness or whatever and so they swear that they're going to take those braids off Friday and do their relax and serve them mm -hmm. out. No, no, no. <laughs> Learn how to wrap a hair wrap. Learn how to, you know, camouflage in some way, shape or form, you know. But don't be tempted to relax your hair right after receive, um, right after removing your, your braids because you are already at risk to a degree when you're using a chemical on your scalp, even when your scalp is in healthy condition. You certainly don't want to have it open, so to speak, to receiving chemicals even more. Okay? Now, transitioning from relaxed hair to natural hair. Somebody asked me that. Yeah, I'm at the point now where I'm better getting firm and I want to go ahead and transition. I just want to know the best way and the most healthy way to do it. <laughs> and uh, and that's absolutely you you have chemicals in so if you decide to allow the hair to grow out, it's important to go to that same person if they also hair is growing out. Relaxed hair has met with their natural hair, and that line is called the line of demarcation. That's like the weakest point on your hair. So it's important to do whatever is necessary to make where that line is, where that hair meets that relaxed hair, that natural hair meets that relaxed hair, um, it's, it's very vulnerable. So it's important to allow it to be strengthened as much as possible or to not go against the hair um, as far as the things you're doing. Like you don't want to do anything that's going to cause breakage. You don't want to do anything that's going to be detrimental um, in the process and eventually you're going to be working towards trimming that hair off. You know, you may not be interested in getting a haircut, a complete haircut right away, but if you're trying to let the hair grow out, it's important at least to trim it, you know, as you're doing it. But good conditioning treatments help to um, reinforce that, that point where that relaxed hair, that chemically treated hair is meeting that natural hair because the natural hair is so much stronger than that hair that has been previously relaxed. So you, um, that's the first thing. And then to um, also work with different hairstyles that don't put stress on the hair. So it's fine to go with braided hairstyles, again, as long as you're going to a knowledgeable braider, because the same issue is present. You have new growth and you have chemically treated hair. You have to go to someone who is knowledgeable enough to not do harm to your hair in the process. And really, it's about having patience from there and using a bit of creativity and allowing that hair to grow so that you don't become discouraged when you can't figure out 
this don't look right. Because, you know, <laughs> it's, this, it's this kinky hair down here, and then it's this straight hair on the ends, and it's not going to look right. I mean, to you, because you've, you've been accustomed to hair that moves a certain way, hair that has a certain appearance, and hair that has a certain sheen to it. And then this hair here is a whole different ball game because this hair doesn't move the same. It doesn't have the same sheen. This has a, a whole different kind of sheen with your natural hair. And um, it doesn't reflect the light the same as straight hair does. It has a healthy glow to your natural hair. And straight hair has um, a, almost like a creative glow to it because you've been, you know, spraying it down with oil sheets and that kind of thing. So, you know, good common sense um, cautions are necessary when you're transitioning the hair. Um, from relaxed to natural. And the professional aspect is very good because she can also help you with um, creative hairstyles. In the meantime, it kind of blends in. Hairstyles with a lot of texture work good when you're transitioning. You know, like to twist the hair or braid it down and then to take it loose because now the ends, which were previously straight, they're kind of succumbing to the, the new growth hair, which tends to have a little bit more texture. And, um, the brother was saying someone told him he couldn't lock his hair. Now, what was that about? He said it was when you get older, your hair gets finer mm -hmm. and it won't lock. Okay. I mean, I remember why I, I couldn't get a comb through my hair, so I wasn't understanding what was going on. With that. <laughs> okay. Well, I got one answer to that. You see, Europeans with straight hair. Right. Yeah. Straight hair do have locks. Right. right. Okay. Right. So while it is true that your hair does trans change, as you mature. It is true that the hair goes through changes. In some instances, it becomes more kinky because sometimes when the hair begins to gray, it becomes more resistant. And some people, the hair tends to become even more soft. So anyway, um, as long as the hair has a curl pattern of any kind, whether it's wavy, crinkly, like a little zigzag, or even a curl, the hair has the ability to lock. In fact, if left alone, it wants to. If you don't comb your hair, if you leave the hair alone, it naturally wants to lock. But we comb our hair, we shampoo, and we condition it, we detangle and all that stuff. You know, but left alone, your hair has a natural inclination to entwine with itself and to lock. It will, it will lock. It absolutely and you, will lock. You do that with men. If you don't believe me. <laughs> I'm going to tell my father about you. <laughs> there you go. Okay, and the last question, and then I'm going to let the next brother come on, is um, diet and stress, uh, how does it affect the hair? We already spoke about it. We already talked about it. Um, stress is like one of the number one factors and um, um, in, in, um, the detriment of hair and skin and of the body in general. When, we're, when we have um, issues and, and, you know, things in life that we go through where we are just overtaxed with day-to-day -day things and where relationships aren't in place and what have you, it shows up in the hair. It doesn't matter whether your hair is relaxed or, or we're chemically treated or natural. Stress plays an important role on how the body functions. When things are not flowing, then you tighten up and become restricted in so many ways, your body is not even absorbing nutrients like it should. And therefore, the rest of you can't be fed. You begin to break down. And that's where dis-ease comes in because, you know, mentally we're in disarray. You know, we, we can't focus. Things are not in order. And so when things are not in order, you know, there's a breakdown, and it manifests itself outwardly most of the time with hair and skin and weight. Those are key ways to, do, to look at yourself or to listen to what other people are saying when they're looking at you sometimes, because family will tell you um, that something is going on, and maybe you need to look at it and make some changes in what's taking place and what's going on in your life. Um, even um, like with my hair, for instance, I can tell because, okay, you know, like say you've had hair that you've been locked in for five years. Well, 
three years ago, you know, I didn't have a job or um, I didn't have, you know, a place to live or I just didn't know where my next meal was going to come from. And um, I went through a whole lot of drama and stress. This is not a true story, but let's say it did. <laughs> okay, but I went through a whole lot of drama and stress. Something was going on in my life. I was being impacted by things in my world. Um, and things got back on track. Okay, I have locked hair. My hair is six years old, let's say. Well, somewhere, somewhere right in the middle, you're going to see some weak areas. And you're going to swear you've been taking care of your hair. But the thing about locked hair, it reveals so much, is because this locked hair doesn't fall away. See, when we have short hair or relaxed hair or, let's say, comb through hair in general, that hair has the opportunity to shed and fall away because the hair is shedding and falling away all the time, every day, right now. Right now, your hair is shedding. But with locked hair, that shedded hair stays intact. It stays entwined with that previously tangled hair. So you can't quite tell with locked hair because maybe it just doesn't come out the scalp. And maybe it does. Because a lot of times you'll start to see a little circle of shiny ball scalp. Because something happened, something went on, you've been traumatized, and hair is coming out. So here, so here we have on your locked hair where it kind of tells a story. Halfway down that strand, you start to see weak, weak hair, you know, and um, if the hair isn't locked and, and it, it is combed through hair, then you can still see break. You still see a little short area. The scalp is such a susceptible place because so many nerve endings end right here at the scalp. So it's such a susceptible place. But when you have those issues, first you got to change what's causing it, number one. But Hopefully, you have enough information to now want to also, you know, include your diet in that change. And when the diet changes, then you got your medicine, and it's all coming together, and it's all working for you. And, you know, we've been talking about it the whole time. So um, I'm going to close with that statement, if it did answer your question. Okay. And I want to give thanks to you all for allowing me to